Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Meow, I don't want to hear anything out of y'all. We're just going to have a good time, meow. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have a good time recording this podcast, say? Eh? Well, you know, just a little cat and mouse for everyone. Yeah, see? <laughs> I got nothing else besides that. Anywho, uh, joining me also is Torterra. I promise I'll be late on time, Norman. Just fall for my adorableness and don't go past the whole uh, giant tortoise Pokemon. Yeah, you know what? I'll just grab the Poke doll and just imagine I'm talking to you there. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I feel hurt. Oh, too bad. You can't get me. <laughs> oh, wow, I hate this episode already. <sighs> Boy, so, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review. Pony Life Season 1, Episode 3, um, titled Cute Apocalypse Meow. Uh, in this episode, Fluttershy makes an adorable new friend with a dark sense of humor, and she has to muster all of her cuteness to protect her friends from his dark side. Yeah, um, uh, how do I even. Anywho, yeah, um, yeah, first impressions. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, hot on the heels of best of the worst, it seemed like wow, we're we're getting some real de- detestable antagonists, not even fun ones. I actually skipped watching this when it first aired and caught it yesterday. And knowing where they're going with Fluttershy in this show, or at least how she'll be portrayed, I was like, uh, this was a this was a sign of things to come. And it wasn't a, a, a sign, a good sign. It wasn't anything I was really looking forward towards. But it at least features a, the antagonist getting their comeuppance, which is more than I felt a uh, dishwater slog received. All right, all right. And Tara, what about you? I mean, I kind of, uh, how do I say it? I wouldn't say I hate it, but I'm also saying I don't like it. I mean, I'd like it. <laughs> I don't know how to say about it. I mean, uh, it does have a good lesson. I don't think um, Friendship is Magic, uh, dis- um, I guess you say, hit this kind of topic. I won't go too into details because it's first impressions. But uh, I guess you could say I found this meh. <laughs> <laughs> I, meh. I, I can agree. I can agree. It's it's like, it, I mean, it's, it's one of those like, meh. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And as for me, this episode was, oh my god, like, they're, they're going, they're, they're, they're doing this, and yeah, I, I can I can understand why Lauren was surprised with the level of tech that they have in this universe. And in all honesty, it's been shown to us that this level of tech should be around. We have arcades, we have big screens, we have what um, a lot of stuff, but this one is really blatant with its uh, what you would call this use of technology, like with Fluttershy's tablet and cell, and the gym that Rainbow Dash hangs out in. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where. If that's the only thing I can complain about, that's good. But you know, honestly, there's more. The antagonist for this episode is Bubbles. Yeah, she's not hardcore. Yep. Is it? Isn't it a he? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, those are our final. Th- <laughs> those are our first impressions. And if you have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. It's pretty short. 11 minutes. <laughs> so um, let's start by joining our leads as they hang out in Sugar Cube Corner. Um, them trying to act all tough and whatnot. So that, that. A baking competition, I guess. Trying to psych PP up for... Uh, pinky, what did I say PP? <laughs> pinky Pie. Up for uh, the Royal Jelly Juggernaut. Yeah. And everybody's... Make- Arr, competition. Arr. Yeah. Everybody's doing a good job trying to be, what you call this, rough and tough. Except for Fluttershy. Whenever she's rough and tough, she's just so adorable and nobody really takes her seriously. Honestly, 
Fluttershy can be tough. Like, you know, she doesn't need to be tough. She's the um, older sister that when she looks at you in a way, you already feel bad. I can't handle her disapproval! <laughs> I know, right? But um, Fluttershy is disappointed by her, which I'm going to call this lack of being tough. So she hangs out in the park and just, you know, just looks at the patrons there and uh, just make fun of them. I really don't remember any of this. You remember, Silva? Well, I saw it yesterday. Basically, Bubbles' thing is to put forth the most negative opinion uh, or interpretation of events and just a very bitter, sarcastic style of humor. And as a result, uh, but then always falls on the... Uh, bubbles offend someone falls on the defense of oh I'm just telling the truth which is really a very a false argument uh, for a variety of reasons yeah and oh, I, f- I feel like this is like aimed at us you know <laughs> well it's certainly aimed at us much like how I think dishwasher slog was aimed at a style of online troll this is also at a taking aim at a culture where everyone is, insists that oh Telling the truth justifies my actions. But here's the problem. One, it's your perception of the truth. It's rather rather arrogant to assume you are speaking the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The absolute purest truth of all. But even more so, it's an uncrafted message. And therefore, it... Well, okay, it's delivered with the intention of hurting people. That's really what it's all about. So if it is, quote, the truth then what purpose does it serve? Oh, I'm just looking to throw someone off or hurt their feelings. Well, then you're, you're, it serves no purpose and you're, wa- and you're just a waste of energy. There, there's a truth for you. <laughs> now, if it's a truth like, okay, this is hard to hear, but if you can work with it, you can become better. There's uh, a different use for it and it can actually lead to something more beneficial. But often that requires a bit of crafting so you can effectively reach your audience, which Bubbles is not practicing because improvement in aid is not the goal. Yeah, and Bubbles here is a negative influence for Fluttershy. As we see when they hang out in Sugar Cube Corner, the main, well, the, the rest of the gang are just trying to, you know, hang out, have fun. And Fluttershy is in a corner giggling to herself and stuff because she's um, talking to Bubbles on the tablet. Yes, the tablet. On a tablet. Oh my goodness. The tablet. What does the world come to? It's... (laughs) How do I even explain this? I mean... There's nothing to explain. It's a magical world of colorful ponies, and now they have technology. I blame Sunset. <laughs> she fired some tech through the portal, and Twilight mass-produced it, and now all of Equestria is becoming distracted. I know. <laughs> well, she does her job, or quote-unquote tries to do her job. Oh, boy. But anyhow, I'm going to pause here and ask for you guys um i i think you already explained yourself silver so i'm gonna just skip to Terra. okay well i kind of agree with what silver said and then i'm gonna add to that there's also i guess that one saying what's like if you don't have uh anything nice to say don't say anything at all which i guess uh i guess fluttershy kind of goes there because it's like you know bubbles isn't saying nice things and then Fluttershy is like, oh, I should probably say something to him. But then after he pulls off that cute axe, like, oh, it's like, um, I don't know. It's just, I get that feeling. It's like, you know, if you don't, because he's being mean to them and he's like, oh, I'm just saying how it is. It's like, I mean, I guess that's right, but it's not saying something nice. It's like, I get it. Like, um, what's a good example? Say someone's being, um, what's a nice term to say? It? A bum. <laughs> uh-huh. And, you know, at first you're like, Oh, I probably should say it, but it's like, no, you don't want to hurt their feelings. So, you, you know, you say something nice to them. But then as they go on and they don't improve, then you can be like, okay, you know what? Now I'm not going to say something nice. Now I got to tell them how it is. <laughs> but that's, by, by your logic then, Tara, it's kind of counterproductive because you're not really motivating them to not be a bum. But I, I do 
see your point. I do see your point. Um, a much better phrase would be, uh, or a much better example would be, uh, let's just say that, okay, for me, I started another channel. Uh, said channel is all about magic degoodering. And over there, I do video editing. My video editing skills compared to you both are much lower since I don't really know how to do stuff. And uh, to me, I feel it's okay. And the rest of the audience who watch it are just okay with it because they don't really pay attention. But if you guys were to watch it and give me criticism without any constructiveness, it'll be criticism for criticism's sake. Uh, You can just, for example, you can just say, oh, your editing work here sucks. And your point? (laughs) If you were to say something like, oh, your editing work here is not that great, you probably should try and brush up have you tried doing this and that? So, at least, yes, uh, there's a truth with a bit of positivity at the end. Would you agree, Silva? Well, I wouldn't say your editing sucks. I'd probably just go into what you could do to strengthen it. So, what if here you tried this? Or what if here you uh, impose this sh- You combine these two shots by splitting the frame. Mm. And with because honest, honestly saying, oh, this sucks, or your, or this isn't entertaining. Well, that actually puts people on the defensive and closes them off to hearing out the rest. It's uh, honestly an empty observation. That's true. That's true. Because um, by attacking their work that they do so hard, even though they're not great at it, it it gets them on the defensive and gets them not wanting to hear what you have to say because you don't really have anything nice to say. So why should I listen to you kind of deal? Well, it kind of also depends on who you ask because some people don't take criticism. So like Silva said, he could say, oh, you got to just do a few touch-ups here, this and that. And then the person could be like, no, you're wrong. I've been doing this for years and I think it's fine. (laughs) Uh, Well, then there's no no getting past their ego. So time to move on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and well, um, talking about moving on, we move on to the next scene or the continuing scene where um, Rarity goes up to Fluttershy, who's on the tablet and not really hanging out with the group or paying attention to her old friends because she's busy with her new friends. Uh, Rainbow Dash swoops in, wanting to know who the hey is Fluttershy talking to because it could be a new boyfriend or something, you know, like a tall handsome, dashing, draconicus. You know, those kind of creatures. They're rare, from what I understand. The rarest of the rare. Yeah. Rare like a shiny Pokemon. (laughs) Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, Fluttershy is smitten with one. Yes, no? She's smitten with a talking cat. Is no one going to call attention to the fact that there's a talking cat? You you look over at Opal, it's like, Opal, have you been holding out on us? (laughs) Yeah. Probably, I... Uh, I, I don't know. Opal! Opal, you could have made your disdain v- vocal. But I guess not. I guess w- the truth is just too hard for you to express. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the, the talking cat. So, anywho, uh, we are introduced to Bubbles. Bubble is Fluttershy's new friend. Uh, he's a bit mean well Fluttershy says he has a dark sense of humor and uh, this is one of those lines where dark sense of humor means laughing at a disabled person that's dark yeah, that's not dark that's just that's not a word well it depends on the context like everything is context here but still um what well, the, the group says, oh, okay, a friend of Fluttershy is a friend of ours. So let's try and hang out with Fluttershy's new friend. Applejack and Rainbow Dash um, hang out at the gym, waiting for Fluttershy to come and warm up with them because, well, Fluttershy needs to work out, yo. That's something. And I don't remember Ponyville having a gym. So, yeah. So Fluttershy walks in with Bubbles. And Applejack's first impression of Bubble is not great. And the cycle goes around where 
the group tries to have a great time and Bubbles just comments on things and say how everything sucks and it's not up to my level. And when he offends someone and Fluttershy is about to tell him off, Bubble does the cute eyes and Fluttershy goes gaga over it. And at the same time too, Bubble kind of bribes Fluttershy in this scenario here. So the, the cycle goes around from Applejack and uh, Rainbow Dash to Spike and Twilight. And especially poor Spike here. Uh, Spike says that, oh my god, I, I'm i having a ball. This is the greatest day of my life. And Bubble says, oh wow, you have a sad life then. <laughs> and that turns Spike sad. And one thing I have to point out here is that Spike's VA here is a new voice actor, actress. So yeah, Katie Westlock is not voicing Spike again. So that's kind of sad. But she's she expressed on the Twitter that she's uh, not against voicing Spike in the future. True. In another My Little Pony iteration. True. And I'm guessing that uh, Katie here just wants to do or just want to voice Spike in Friendship is Magic and Equestria Girls. Um, Pony life can be handed over to an upcoming talent or someone who wants to do the job. I feel that way. So, uh, where was I again? Yes, um, fast forwarding to stuff because, yes, a bubble is a meanie. I just find it funny. It's like, a bubble. <laughs> yes. but uh, You can have the great like, beware, the great destroyer, a bubble is coming. <laughs> Yes, but anywho, um, I I think that's it for part one. Yeah, uh, part one shows that uh, it's just a cycle of bubble says mean things or does mean things. Good do googly eyes at Fluttershy. At Fluttershy is smitten by him, and bubble to sweeten the deal gives stuff to Fluttershy. So yeah, Silver, what what do you have to say, man? Well, again, I feel like this is more aimed at an online personality. I don't know about in real life. As usually the consequence of, of being around other people tempers even the even those folks who say, oh, I'm just speaking the truth. Oh, how interesting. Where was that when we were actually talking face to face? Oh, uh, uh, uh. So with Bubble, here's the thing. I'm, I'm thinking of actually George Carlin me because he he had a dark or harsh sense of humor very cynical of you know, i'm just telling it like it is everyone always said but i feel like people mistook his style of comedy he was trying to call people to be aware All right there was a uh, i always love his uh talk on how we we've, we've softened language because rather than than confront the ugliness of the world. We try to hide it behind a turn. He was very anti-PC, I guess. That was done with intent. A lot of people try to mirror that by just insulting or or throwing shade at others. And as a result, uh, they completely miss the mark. So, and that's what I see with Bubbles here. He He's not trying to improve the situation. He, in fact, he's got a very abusive uh, streak to him very abusive and the fact that he has to buy his way back into Fluttershy's good graces is perhaps one of the most damning endorsements yeah and uh, those actions or those behaviors are already red flags though I will say that the uh, Fluttershy's excuses oh he just has a dark sense of humor oh he's just telling it like it is or something like that we make these excuses for people all the time Especially in the online world, especially if they, if we find them entertaining, it's like, hey, that person is doing something really awful. Oh, but they're so funny. No, they're still awful. True, true. And Tara, what about you? What do you have to say? Um, I mean, honestly, I so explained it very well because I agree. I mean, I haven't dealt with people like this, but I've heard stories about 
uh, some people going dealing with people like this where it's like, yeah, you know, um, just saying what it is. And then sometimes they make they make themselves feel like the victim, like saying, hey, this person called me that. And they'd be like, what? They're lying. Don't listen to them. I'm your friend. And it's like, oh, my God, it's one of those things. A serial abuser. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's it. <laughs> But at the same time, too, if you really think about it, this is kind of Fluttershy's M.O. because uh, she did it with Discord. She did? Yeah. I don't know. She never made excuses for Discord. She just... But she did say, she did say, look, he's acting this way because he's, he himself hasn't had a friend. But he, she got mad and confronted him when he was doing something wrong, especially, say, drowning Sweet Apple Acres. That's true, that's true. I mean, I, later on, um, I think what, uh, I'm not 100% sure if this is fan fiction or not, but I think Fluttershy did mention, uh, give Discord a chance because, well, he's kind of, well, different, not not similar to the rest. I mean, he has a twisted point of view in life. So, give him a chance. Well, she definitely said, "Give him a chance and uh, and keep calm and flutter on." I mean, um, Discord there. Well, he, t- he takes time to uh, warm up. To, I mean, one of the creme de la creme of that is the episode where Twilight was, what you would call this, on a book sortation, and somehow Discord and the rest of the main five got to hang out and become good friends. I don't know if uh, if Fluttershy ever said, oh, give him a chance. She was mostly, I think, offended when Twilight implied that they were all brainwashed. Like, the only way you could like Discord is if he's put a spell on you. I mean, that episode there has ulterior motives for Discord, but still, the rest of the gang gave him a chance and they enjoy his presence. And later on, in the Christmas special, we get to see... Rainbow Dash and Discord hang out. And that's just because, what, um, Discord wanted to give Fluttershy a good gift. And said gift was a chinzilla, what was it? Yeah, whatever. I mean, this is just rehashing old stuff. And we, we got a new little demon here to deal with. Uh, uh, yeah, part two. Let's continue on to part two. So we start off part two by the main six hanging out in Sugar Cube Corner with their new friends Bubbles. And Bubbles here, well, eh, let's just say Bubbles here is not fun. So anyway, um, Pinkie Pie serves the gang some cupcakes that she is going to try and enter the, whatchamacallit, ju- baking juggernaut thingy, baking contest, yes. And said cupcake was uh, lack for a better word is bad the her, her friends try to sugarcoat the cupcakes by saying this is not your best work or something like that and bubble just says like it sucks you should just give up and what's this for contest uh, reality tv sucks and yeah with, with that bubbles Really, really did a boo boo on this one. All of Fluttershy's friends say, Oh no, you shouldn't say those kind of things. That's really mean. And Bubbles here just says, I'm just saying the truth, yo. If you can't take it, like, yeah, tough luck. Fluttershy, notice how this devastates Pinkie Pie and tries to scold Bubbles. And Bubble does her cutie eyes and to sweeten the deal, bribes Fluttershy with a anklet or something like that. And Fluttershy just... Sorry, no. Rarity comes in and just says, That's not right. You go look at Pinkie Pie. She's devastated in this. And Fluttershy notices this too and scolds Bubbles. And Bubbles says, Oh, if you can handle me at my greatest and whatever it is, uh, you're not meant to be my friend. I'm taking back all the things I gave you. Boo. And I'm out of here. And Fluttershy is devastated and confused. Why would he do that? Like, he friend. Why? No, this does not compute. And with that, 
Fluttershy looks at Pinky and feels bad. And you know what? Fluttershy is going to stand up to Bubbles because the owner of her friends. So yay. Fluttershy grows big and goes to the other end of this strange world that is called Ponyville because there's a Starbucks. What? And I'm going to end there for a bit. Uh, Tara, what do you think? I guess this one part of the the one part here, which uh, I guess it, um, Bubbles isn't in the wrong because he's just stating his opinion. Like when he said reality TV is trash. And it's like, I mean, some people don't really like reality TV. But then after once they're like, Bubbles, you can't say that. That's mean. And it's like, why? And it's like, I mean, I mean, I guess it makes sense because Bubbles, I mean, I don't know if Bubbles actually knew if Pinky was on the reality TV show or not. But then, I don't know, it's just, it's so, this is why I find it meh, because, like, I mean, Bubbles isn't in the wrong, because it's like, you know, people are free to state their own opinions, but then after, like, you can't say that, that's mean, it's like, ah, that's how I feel about reality TV, it's like, well, you did, but it was mean, it's like, how does that mean? Bubbles was just stating an opinion. I think the better way to state an opinion is to not be blatantly um, uh, what should I call that word? Um, dismissive of it, because yes, you you don't like reality TV. There's a way to say that you don't like something. For example, I do not like. I dislike reality TV. It's it's not for me. Rather than saying reality TV is trash, same meaning, different delivery. But anywho, um, Silver, what do you have to say? Well, on the topic of saying, I too, I too am not a fan of reality TV, but when you say reality TV is trash, is that not imposing your view on the universe, saying, dictating terms to everyone else? Whereas, is it, I think it's actually more honest and more truthful to say, I'm not a fan, or even say, I think it celebrates the worst in us. Mm-hmm. I mean... Boy, how did can it? Now, that said, I've seen a few reality TV shows, like, uh, oh, there was a dance uh, a group dance series that was stunning to watch i guess let's see here sorry um i guess it's all based on what the show is because when you have a show like let's say for example uh, america's got talent um some of the performers there were or are really really talented like they are really awesome versus a show like tmz that's trash. TMZ definitely celebrates the worst in everyone. Yes. Including our desire to see other people hurt for our amusement. Mm-hmm. But still, uh, it's one of those scenarios where what is the content and what is the context? But you were saying, Silver? Well, basically, so Bubbles is taking the lazy approach. And like a true, a true abuser... D- Manipulates the situation to make the other person feel like they've done them wrong. Avoiding responsibility. Uh, That's the other thing. People who proudly express, oh, I'm stating the truth. I'm so brave. But really, it's usually a cowardly manipulation tactic that they're relying upon. Or Or they're taking a pot shot and relying on the kindness of others to keep them out of hot water. In my eyes, it's the opposite of courage. But then we get Fluttershy growing, which as this was very early on in the show, it's like around that time, we're still trying to get the hang of the rules. Fluttershy's gimmick is she shrinks and gets bigger depending on her mood. And I'm just like, what, what, what is going on? What? I don't even know what's happening anymore. And Pinkie Pie explodes into gray confetti. Okay. That's a thing now again, I guess. I don't know anymore. I'm confused. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> it shows a bit of variety in terms of what the, mean Cass can do or wants to do uh, Fluttershy here ha- has the ability to grow big and grow small depending on her emotions Applejack just breaks the fourth wall there's something new for her Pinkie Pie explodes yay and Twilight now is a cat meow or she shatters Rarity can summon Shay's alarm just what's Rainbow's shtick though oh uh, she she can mm, yeah she, she can Activate her seed. Remember Gundam? Oh, I remember seed. I probably wish I couldn't. <laughs> uh, another big fan of Gundam seed. What about Gundam wing? 
Let Gundam Wing a bit more. Seed, it was more Destiny that just... Oh, the sadness. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anywho, let's carry on. Uh, Fluttish time... Oh, by the way, so we forgot to mention Starbucks. That's a thing now. Oh, why not? It's everywhere else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boys. Forget your local cafes and whatnot. Go for corporate. Yay. <laughs> Oh boys. Well, anywho, uh, yes. Fluttershy stops by at Starbucks confronting uh, Bubbles, and Bubbles dismissively ignores Fluttershy, or not really ignores, but just says that your yesterday's news because I have a new best friend now, and said best friend is called, what you call this? Buttershy? And yes. technically, it's a mirror version of Fluttershy. And remember Hipster Shy from whatchamacallit, this? The episode? What is it? Oh, yes. That pony is woke. Yeah. And yeah, th- this is Hipster Shy. Like, dismiss. <laughs> like, this is the total opposite of Fluttershy. And somehow, she is. Adorable somehow? I don't know. So anyway, uh, Bubble replaces Fluttershy in an instant. And um, Bubbles tries to be cute and whatnot just to say, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you feel that way. And Fluttershy is not taking it at all. Because Fluttershy is going to do her own cuteness. And they have this cute battle where one tries to out-cute the other. But come on. We all know nobody can out-cute for the shy. That's it. It's futility to even try. Yes, and somehow that makes Bubble explode and blast off again. Oh no. And with that, Fluttershy defends the honor of her friends. They hug it out. And Hipster Shy is not paying attention at all. With that, the episode ends. What the hell did I just watch? Oh, wait. The, before that. Pinkie Pie makes cupcakes. They're delicious. And yay. Everybody has a good time. Yay. Now episode ends. She breaks her sugar addiction. Which if anyone needs to hit the gym, it's probably Pinkie. Oh, true, true, true. Gotta burn some calories. <laughs> oh, yes. That is also true. But anywho, let's wrap it up. And Silver, what do you think in final thoughts? Well, clearly, Bubbles went to the cloning facility that got all those Fluttershy clones for Twilight's coronation. Oh. I mean, that... Wait, yes, the the Buttershy was blonde, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they basically swapped the colors of Fluttershy. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, so they're carrying the tradition of those random Fluttershy clones. What? Although she has a pink coat, so there's that. Here's the thing. I more appreciate that uh, at least Bubbles got some comeuppance. Dishwasher Slog, he uh, he basically, well, it's kind of funny. Bubbles did the same thing: spoiled the ending of a book he'd already read, or ruined the or ruined it for someone else's enjoyment. What Dishwasher Slog? They did an iris wink out on him as if you know we were supposed to be charmed by it. Here, at least, they blasted the little creep into the stratosphere. So, there's that. You know, take your victories where you can get them, eh? Yeah. Honestly, it, I feel like, realistically, Fluttershy would just be glad he left. Like, just don't waste your time even going to confront this guy. What What do you think was going to happen? That you reconcile? I realize that's what some people think when they, that when they try to talk to an abusive person, that they'll somehow get... A clean break. No, it's not going to happen. The best thing you can do is just cut that person out of your life and say, thank goodness that's over. Bye. Boom. Done. We, we all need to do that sometimes. Like, sometimes in life we come upon things that are quote-unquote toxic and the only way to better ourselves is to just cut them off. But anywho, uh, Tara, what do you think? Like I said earlier, I, f- I find this meh because I guess I can see what's kind of going with the the um, the lesson. I mean, Pony Life lately hasn't really been showing 
lessons, I guess. But I guess this one's um, showing that, you know, don't be with uh, toxic or negative people. And if they don't respect your decisions as a friend, then they're not your friends at all. Which, I, I mean, that's just the way. I don't know if they're actually intending that. But that's just the way I see it. That's why I find this episode meh. Because, I don't know, it's like... I don't know. I just don't have any other words. It's all good. It's all good. I do remember, though, that when this episode first came out and people saw Buttershy, I saw one Twitter post where people were like, look, Sweetie Bloom, it's you. <laughs> all right. Anyway, and as for me, this episode was... Eh, it's okay. It's not bad. But... I don't know, the, the quote-unquote lesson, the story here, it feels like they're... Hmm, how do I put this? Po- pony life is confused. It doesn't really get what it wants. It's It feels like it's trying to appeal to kids, but wants to be hip with the adults, yo. So I feel like it fails on that aspect there. It doesn't know what it wants and missing the point of the show entirely. That's how I feel. And in all honesty, the jokes here are not meant for... How? The story itself is not meant for young, young kids to kind of absorb and understand it's more aimed to a much older audience but the cute art style kind of makes it mute or kind of a what a double positive turns into a negative and so on you know what i mean i feel like we got that mixed up two two rights don't make a wrong no it feels that way but anywho um all in all it's not that bad but it's not great so anyway um yeah those those are my thoughts those are my thoughts uh before we leave this anything more to add i guess this counts towards the royal jelly juggernaut arc so to speak which it's been very strange to watch pony life doing these arcs which Eh, I guess I'll get into it more when Fluttersh- when it's Fluttershy once again wanting to talk to an animal oh. uh, who can talk to everybody. But these arcs bring out a strange side to the story. How so? It's sort of like this banner. This whole group of episodes falls under this one banner. And you think, oh, they're building to something. But more like it's just, oh, this thing is happening. Okay, that thing has happened. And then we hit a hard reset so it doesn't have a lot of impact I see what you mean I see what you mean but still it's still early I mean they they, the what the the Juggernaut cook-off is kind of a like the arc that the show is going to but not really introducing new protagonists or antagonists for Pinkie Pie to deal with Eh, but still, it's okay. It's okay. But anyway, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I think we're going to shift gears a little and return to Little Witch Academia. Uh, yes, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Uh, just because it's a two-parter, we're going to do uh, Season 1, Episode 12 and 13. So, yeah, check us out there soon enough. Next week, I think. But anyway. <coughs> yes. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Norm- is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me in a variety of places. Uh, if you do a search on Twitter or DeviantArt for MLP Silver Quill, you shall find me. You can also support my videos and comics and other creative endeavors through Kofi or uh, Patreon doing a search for a silver quill uh, on Wednesdays when there's a new comic about you can find me on Equestria Daily We're right now we're looking at uh, Transformers and the start of season 10 
Which, boy howdy, when we talk about that, that'll have uh, strong opinions, I think. And uh, if you do a search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear. At the time we're recording this, I'm struggling to get vid- get a video produced, but I shall not give up. I will endure. Don't give up, man. you got to keep it up. You can do it. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, boys. We, we are <laughs> how can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they could just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. And like Silva said too, I'm also kind of in the same situation where I'm also struggling to pull out YouTube videos. You can do it! Boys, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, don't give up, guys. That is just a roadblock for you to cross. I was just to say, I used to be afraid of hurdles, but then I got over it. <laughs> See, it's working! Yay! Ah, uh, boys, well, anyway, uh, also be subscribing to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. I stitch radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also get us on plentyoflive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And also, a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Requill. And I am the Torterra. We'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Mies Show. See ya! Meow! Bye bye! Man, Pony Life is giving this negative reaction on me, man. Like, oh god, that's not what I want to be known for. For me, it's leaving me speechless, but in a good way because I can never get a good opinion on something. <laughs> And for me, it's just throwing good night requirements into a steady stream. So it's like, oh, I like doing this, but how many episodes are there? No, it's